you are going to so enjoy this conversation that I'm bringing you today with my good friend Georgian Banoff, who actually grew up in communist Bulgaria and made his way out as a young adult uh, to America. And that's when and where he encountered Jesus and the love of Jesus and the kindness of God. Uh, so we're going to talk today about, about what it means to be a friend of God, uh, but also about how joy is a weapon against hopelessness and depression and discouragement. How is it that with all of that's going on in the world that wants to bring us down, how do we find that inward joy? And we're going to talk about that today. I know it's going to be greatly encouraging for you. Hello, my friend. <laughs> good to see you, Georgian. Likewise. Good to see you, Brent. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Georgian, I'm so excited to um, talk with you today. Uh, I, you and Winnie have been such longtime friends. We go back mm -hmm. more than two decades. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and wow. um, I remember, uh, so this would be, you know, for me, um, like, what would that be? Early uh, 2000s. And um, there were two things that really helped me to understand grace, like rich grace, that Jesus has done it all. There's nothing we can do to perform, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. One, one was reading um, the message translation by Eugene Peterson. That helped me a bunch. And the other was meeting this amazing guy named Georgian Banoff. <laughs> <laughs> and just just being around you and listening to you and hanging out with you and it's 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 not just hearing the message but it's it's almost like permission granted when when I'm around someone like you permission granted to believe that the good news is this good so I just want to thank you personally because you've had a huge impact on my life um, so thank you really appreciate you're welcome, you you're welcome <laughs> so I know uh, the last several years you've been doing a school of ministry. And uh, that you've you've brought it online now, and so yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about it and and how people can find you that kind of good stuff. The online school is is going strong. We have expanded uh, globally. We have students from practically all over the the world, at least like 30, 40 nations, mm -hmm. and a wonderful international community of very hungry believers. There's total unity. There's hunger. There's the there's the focus uh, and. Uh, and and uh, then then the teaching is going really good. And then because of our seven years of uh, eight years of of uh, physical school, we have we have seven year plus leaders who are still with us from the physical schools, and they're ministering behind the scene. It's very interactive. I'd say it's the best online school on the planet in that respect that we're creating this very interactive yeah. community. So it's awesome. That's awesome. And so I know people can go to gcssm.org and mm -hmm. find out all about that. Uh, GC stands for Global Celebration, which is your your ministry. And you know what I just remembered too, Georgian, because I know you so well, and I'm I'm jump, jumping some steps here because people don't yeah. know you, who are many who are listening to this. And obviously they can tell you have some kind of accent. I know that it's Bulgarian, but... Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah. can you can you just give us like the really short version of you know your how, what, how God met you and brought you here? I know it's a really long story, but just give us like the the really short version. Yeah, the the full version is on the first chapter of my my book and joy the uh, nice. it's called encounter the encounter. And I I was born in Bulgaria, which is at the time communist country, Eastern Europe, and I grew up uh, in a broken home. I, my my mom. My mom raised me practically, and and uh, no 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 contact with that. Anyways, uh, I I grew up uh, playing violin, you know, and and you know eventually switched to drums for rock and roll band. If you can believe that, we switched to that. We were the first uh, official rock band to to come up in the '60s, mm -hmm. and eventually the communists shut us down because they realized, oh, we we're, we're stirring you know young people for freedom and so forth. And but that pushed me to desire to to 
to, to escape and to, to go to a free country. I didn't realize we'll come all the way to America. I mean, it was a very dangerous uh, journey, nevertheless. Made it to America and was actually straight Hollywood. I wanted to be a musician in Hollywood, but I was disappointed. It, it, Hollywood didn't turn out anything that I was dreaming. And, and right at that low point of my disappointment, what do I do now? Uh, cut, I cut my way off. I couldn't come back to Bulgaria. I just like, I felt like I made a mistake perhaps. But what do I do now? And the Jesus people were uh, ministering in the streets of Los Angeles, great area, eventually a, a little bit up north. I got I got caught in their love net and they was feeding me and being hospitable. And, and eventually after two months of intense, intense love and attention, hospitality, I I knew that there's no God in my mind because I was trained by the comments that way. But I thought, well, if there is a God, I need to know now. Or if there isn't, there's nothing what they're saying. I'm going back to Hollywood and I've got to do what I got to do. And he revealed himself supernaturally. And that's how I met Jesus through that, the Jesus people's love. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And and then you started, you know, obviously on a journey of uh, discovering just, just how much Jesus loved you, the grace. Oh, yeah. I spent I spent a whole year, my first year with the Lord in in a tiny little rent. I rented a little house so I could barely just so I don't have to work long to to make it. I wanted to know the Lord and read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Somebody donated an anonymously Bulgarian Bible, so I says I have to read the whole thing cover to cover. I want to know God in every way I can, and so I secluded myself in this tiny little place and had the best like. Uh, a year long honeymoon with God, and I had amazing. <laughs> Till this day, it's the most, you know, strongest, beautiful relationship because I had nobody to, no phone calls, no nothing. I just know, you know, hardly anybody. And yeah. I, I met the Lord in a deep, deep way. In, this was in Ventura, California. And then eventually oh. uh, went to, uh, uh, like, a similar to the ministry, like, a evangelistic. Discipleship training school. Yeah. Uh -huh. and through Winky Pratney. Winky Pratney came to our, our, our church and he introduced me. I wanted to follow him and be hanging out with him. He introduced me to this school in Northern California in uh, in near Santa Rosa. Uh -huh. And and that that's where I eventually I met my wife to be. I uh, uh -huh. began to write songs together for the children. There was nothing for children back, back then. If you were yeah. saved in the 70s, the there wouldn't be nothing other than the early Jesus music. But if you're a child, there, there was nothing for children. So we created a, a thing called the Music Machine, then another tape called the Boo Fox and Butterflies and so on. And that was uh, eventually an, a group for adults, called, uh, young people called Silver Wind. That was my early contribution to the Jesus yeah. music and to the Jesus, to the body of Christ. Wow. Wow, that's so fun. You know, I've heard your story so many times, uh, and I don't recall you ever seeing uh, Ventura as a as a key place in your journey because I grew up in Camarillo. Wow. So yeah, wow. just you know, fifteen miles down the down the freeway there. So anyway, yeah. I just didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah, actually, I I was the witnesses was started in Ventura, but these guys' his house was in Ohio. The, it was like a halfway house. They were evangelists. I mean, they were on fire, formerly drug addicts and everything, but they're on fire for God. And so Ohio was where they kept feeding me and feeding me. And then Ventura, I ended up finding a little place after I got saved. And anyway, it's fun. Good. Very fun. I love hearing the journeys. And I know, of course, you're just sharing little bits and pieces of this really astounding you know, uh, journey that God has taken you on, um, and, and look where you are now. Like you're just, you're, I, I call you a, a joy apostle to the world. <laughs> really, wow. it's, it's kind of yeah. what you are. And thank you. Uh, and it, uh, you wrote this book called uh, Joy, uh, yeah. God's God's secret weapon it's for weapon. every believer. So mm -hmm. I I would love for us to talk a little bit about this. Sure. And, and really just use this as a way to spring into um, encouraging those who are listening about about joy and where it really comes from. Because uh, I know you, I know you to be an in incredibly joy filled person. And when I when we say joy, we're not just talking about, oh, look at me, I'm happy. Uh, right. We're talking about someone that's got something deeper than that, yeah. where nothing can steal uh, right. this, this deep, uh, 
over, you know, bubbling up kind of joy, uh, satisfaction in life, you know, Mm -hmm. not, not to say the frustrations don't happen. That happens to anybody. And yet, and yet you just remain the same person who, who is just so fixed on the love of Jesus that nothing can uh, dissuade you from that. So thank you for writing this. I know it's been a long time coming, huh? Yeah, a long time. 40, 50 years, or some 45 years, something like that. Your second chapter is Friendship with God. And yeah, uh, I think it's just a great place to start. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about friendship with God a little bit and how that fits into the joy in your life. Yeah. Um, uh, I was just, as you're talking, I was thinking how the Jesus people that led me to the Lord were uh, the today's Gen Z's, really. Uh, they were in their 20s, and so was I. And so uh, tail end of the 20s, 24 or something, something like that, which is still within the Gen Z's bracket. But it was the, the drug addicts, the hippies, they were touched by God's grace and power and, and transforming power. And now they're on fire for Jesus and sharing in the simplicity of, the, of, of that. And, and, uh, and so the, the friendship with God was the first thing that the Lord began to minister to me because uh, that, that, uh, that is something I value highly, you know. And, and uh, I mean, I wasn't spiritually ready for much many things. Like, for instance, him, his ministry to me as a father was, was not possible at the time. It took place maybe 10 years after I became born again. I was ready to, because I didn't have a dad in the natural. So therefore, to talk to me about being my dad is too much, you know. But a friend, that's a big deal because I had uh, very few friends, but they were very good friends. And friendship was extremely valuable in a communist culture where you don't trust people because there are many traitors and so forth. Friendship sure. is super valuable. And so yeah. God began to talk to me through the book of Psalms, through David, uh, yeah. through Abraham, and through Moses. It's like they're all friends of God. Yeah. And I go, oh, you can be my friend. I'd love that. I love friendship. And so I, I naturally open up for the Lord to talk to me as a friend. And boy, he's, he's the best friend ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and he, then, then even, even joy, love, like you mentioned, how can we have joy if we don't know love, right? If, we, if we're not feeling loved, we can't rejoice. But when, when, you know, when parents love their children, there's joy. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, the Lord was pouring his love on me and, and through, through friendship, the faithfulness and loyalty of his friendship. And yeah. also something that, uh, that is unique in a way because uh, we don't talk much about the, the fact that God likes you. You know, mm-hmm. to me, uh, he 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 began to talk to me like he likes me, and I'm going, <laughs> really? It's like, oh my goodness, uh, this is amazing! God that loves you, of course, and likes you, and yeah. likes because friends like each other because that's part of friendship to hang out together and like you right. have friends. And anytime I'm in the Bay Area, I need to spend time with you, or spend time over your house, spend over uh, overnight. Yes, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there is a. I mean, I do not want to just come to your church. I want to uh, hang out with you, right. uh, with your fan and, and, and your children at the time. I mean, friendship is something to spend time develop, you know? Yes. It's something and enjoyable. And that's what you are to me. You and Suzanne are uh, friends, mm-hmm. just like Lonnie was friends of ours, not sure. just intercessor and, you know, part of your church or anything, but also a close friend, someone to spend time with. Yeah, so that's what the Lord just begin to download these things. I get it. I says, okay, I know what friendship is. Spending all night, some time talking to your few friends. You don't have too many, but they're yeah. you know, trustworthy. So that's that's uh, that's what. And I spend yeah. hours and hours in this little little like a one bedroom apartment, like a little house. You know, spend time with the Lord all for for average for eight to ten hours a day. I'm not exaggerating. Wow, uh, didn't have natural friends or anything to do it's a small job uh, yeah. you know making pizza for a, a movie theater or popcorn and and yeah. the, like eight to ten hours a day solid with god every day for close yeah. to a year. wow that's so good I, I appreciate that you put like some some realness to what it actually looks like you know i think a lot of times we use the language to be friends with god to be friends with jesus and um uh, but honestly, I, I'll just say for myself, you know, I, I, I learned that language long before I actually 
understood or actually lived it. Like early on, it's like, oh yeah, Jesus is my best friend, except that, except that often I was trying to do the right thing for him or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you know what I mean? Like have, have yeah. a quiet time, which is a good thing. That was kind of lingo used to say, hey, spend some quiet time uh, just alone with Jesus uh, in the morning. Uh, only for me back then, it was more like, am I doing it the right way? Am I reading my Bible? Am I doing journaling? Am I, am I checking off the list? And, uh, and I wasn't really very real with Jesus. And so what I hear you saying is about about being really real, like you had no one else, like Jesus, if I don't, if I just can't talk to you about anything, I got no one else to talk to. And that's really what Jesus wants, right? He wants to be invited into every part of our life. Yes, exactly. And thank, thankfully for me, I was a foreigner. Foreigners don't have much friendship, connection with people. And and uh, in a way, it was a, in an isolation. Not that I wanted to be isolated, but the Lord uh, created that nine months a year, like an extra honeymoon kind of some way, and just really cemented my, my friendship with, with him. And, and it, it, it was like uh, very, very deep, very real. To this day, I long for hours and hours on end. I, I don't have it as much, nowhere like this because yeah, it's yeah. busy. But uh, once, a, once a year, my wife and I go to a, a remote island um, in America that that we could spend time with each other and with the Lord. And, and that's where I, I spend hours that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that just yeah. gets me back to this strong. There's no way to become really a friend in, in a big way without spending time. There's right. just no way. And right. and I love spending time with the one or two friends that I had. It was like right. no brainer all night, all day, weekend. <laughs> and with the Lord, it transferred the same thing. The same mm -hmm. way, in a way, and as reading the Bible, I'm discovering everything about how he reacted to people, how people reacted to him, yeah. David's trials and errors. It didn't bother me. I, I have every bit of a, you know, music, musical kind of a nature. I mean, I had ups and downs galore, but yet there was something that he locked in with God. Plus, he was a rejected kid. And I, I was too. And so I felt, oh, I get it. And and God is there to meet David in the pasture. God is there to meet me in that little hotel room or whatever it was. And it just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. That That is beautiful. I, yeah. uh, I think, like you said, I think there's just seasons where we really get pulled in deeply. And I think the main thing is just don't resist, you know, like go there with him. And I've That's had, cool, even man. in the last few years, I've had, uh, a couple of stretches of, of a few months at a time where where suddenly I just find myself, like you just said, sometimes for six, eight hours sitting. Uh, yeah. I'll read scripture, but mostly I'm just being. I'm being with Jesus, being mm -hmm. real, being with my Father, with Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, but like you said, I don't I don't know uh, that any of us can can just spend countless hours all the time in life. Um, just sitting and being because while we're here, we're also supposed to be the light, be the joy, be the love to people. And that takes some time too. you know, uh, the Lord never wanted us to not be in relationship with others. We're supposed to connect in and that takes time too. So I, I think I'm just saying that for those that are listening, because, because I think sometimes um, we can get that guilt thing, like uh, either guilt that we're not spending enough time with Jesus or, um, you know, on the other side too, that like, oh, I'm not, I'm not spending enough time with people. Uh, I believe if we'll just listen and go with the flow with the spirit, yeah. that's gonna be, there's just going to be the ebbs and flows of more time with Jesus. And then he sends us out just like he did with his followers. Now go out. Okay. Now come back. Let's, you know, let's, yeah. uh, you know, commune more. Anyway, I just wanted to try to explain that to people that there's usually a flow like that. Yeah. And I want to segue uh, from this uh, deep, enjoyable friendship relationship, it was very uh, emotionally fitting for me. Uh, I mean, I, I I enjoy spending time with my best friends, right? So now I got transferred. I, they don't have I don't have them around, and I didn't have new friends. Like I don't speak hardly English. So it was kind of a thing like that. And the Lord became my natural, my go-to, you know, friend. But then 
I, I remember reading the story of, of uh, Joseph, where again, another rejection, another trials and, you know, distances and foreigners and this and that, which I related. And then when he finally reconciled, you know, with, 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 with his brothers, there was weeping tears. I mean, I, I cried too. My gosh, I was like deeply moved by that story. I, and in a way, God was healing me from my distant relationship for my father. I didn't have any, any relationship at all. And, yeah. so Lord, and I says, Lord, I want to feel this way. Like they, they, after the reconciliation, they felt for each other, they loved, they hug, and you know, they forgave. And, and I, I says, I want that kind of, I mean, he, he put that story to, to make me want to have family, want to yeah. have that kind of a deep, relationship uh, after estrangement for years and that's eventually that's why i met winky pratney s- shortly after that so that kind of segue into joining a school right and uh, in, in, in a community and that's that's yeah as for those who don't know what kind of what is going on just flow it because god will segue you from one place to another he knows exactly what he can handle just flow with him and he will Trust him in a way. He will he will guide you through all the ups and the downs of our nature, of our yeah. human humans. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, Georgian. Um yeah, that flow of because uh, sometimes uh, we think it's just me and Jesus and that, that those times are amazing, but actually God is the father of one huge family and he and he loves yeah. family. He created us for family. Totally. And, and but like we you can't jump that, uh we gotta flow with how it fits for us, you know, with the Lord. I mean, and on your own, you fall into loneliness and, and stuff sure. that is negative. But when you're with the Lord, you 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 ask him and he, he will lead you from, like, I couldn't just jump directly into uh, community. I, I needed that me and Jesus time. And yeah. and then I was ready. I said, okay, I, I want to feel like Joseph and the brothers and wanting each other, hugging and this, I, I want that. I, you know, Judah, Ju, uh, Ju, Judah gave himself, says, take me and let my Benjamin brother go. I mean, that was a strong sacrificial kind of thing. That also provoked me. Says, I want to feel like that for right. some human being because I was a single child. And and the the hunger to spend time with came. And then, then those guys that I connected with, they were evangelistic ministry. So then I segue into evangelism, which is my ne- my first kind of job for the Lord, my first thing to the Lord. I love to share the gospel, yeah. and that's how it segue. I think people should be, I uh, should feel the freedom to to trust the Lord to set to lead you from one place to another. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good. So um, yeah, w- let me just. Uh, Hit one more thing here while we're together. Um, there's a very provocative uh, chapter title you have called um, "Joy is not dessert; it's a weapon." Ah. <laughs> what What's that about, Georgian? <laughs> well, um, the you know the the thought is like, okay, we need to love like Jesus, and we need to uh, believe like Jesus, and we need to pray like Jesus, and we need to. Um, you know, heal people, evangelize like he did, and and all that is absolutely there. However, we don't feel like we need to rejoice like Jesus, mm. you know. And and uh, and the Jesus that he revealed himself to me was very extremely joyful, and and beyond mm. joy, it's almost like the ecstasy level. Uh, I went to heaven. He brought me. In, he he. I was seeking the Holy Spirit. I, I wasn't asking for heaven or nothing. I was just seeking the Holy Spirit uh, because the, the guys, the land, the Jesus people says, now that you know Jesus, love Jesus, ask him to baptize. So I was seeking baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was very intense. And at one day, I just went into the heavenly realm in, in actually the, the throne room. And I experienced the 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 joy of the Lord the in His presence, fullness of joy. I I I know exactly what the scripture says because they felt it. And then uh, the the angelic the angels were in ecstatic uh, behavior and like something was hitting them with joy and, and love and ecstasy. And they were in an ecstatic type of uh, atmosphere themselves. So 
I was touched later. And later, I read in his presence, fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there's uh, uh, there's bliss or ex, you know, ecstasy. Really, is what the word is. Pleasure. King James says pleasure, but it's it's divine, spiritual kind of a pleasure. Uh, ecstatic, you know, ecstatic apostles and prophets and so forth, and and that's the and and so. That is what I was ex- I experienced like maybe three weeks old in the Lord. So I know that this joy and ecstasy is huge, and he I was baptized with it, and it, it 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 filled me in a way that like there's no greater joy than the joy you know of knowing the Lord and 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 the joy of Him. He, there's no greater pleasure than, than the pleasure of being seated with Him in heavenly place. All these things began to be put together and so it's a weapon because everything around us want to drag us down to their level to the natural and and joy is only like when you get some money or something or some circumstances to, or go to an ice cream and have a you know it's just that kind of a extra right. but right. to me the joy in the christian realm is not an extra is the essence like love the joy is no more basic or fundamental than love. The, the, those two are inseparable. Then right. peace, I mean, <laughs> peace is like so powerful because it, it disengages from this weird spirit of worry, you know, and, and you know, and peace is like that. Joy disconnects from the spirit of hopelessness and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, like I, what, what am I going to, joy is an ecstatic, state of being one with the lord just yeah. like that 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 to me is what joy is the the the, the permeation uh kind of like your body is permeated with the blood that is inside you yeah. and and your blood makes you pink and everything because it's live with blood and so same with joy to me joy is like the blood uh to a body uh, and it and and you know the Bible says so many times. In fact, I'm intercessor. So I was praying for my country for you, for you before communists fell, and I said, Lord, what happened to me? We were early Christian country, ninth century. We had our own Bible in Bulgarian language. It was a very after Latin and Greek. The Bulgarian was the third language in the world. They had mm-hmm. the New Testament, and you know, and strong Christian nation. We we came to the rivers. In one day, we all baptized the entire nation with the king. It was phenomenal. And now, communism and so forth. And, and the Lord gave me the scripture in Deuteronomy that talks about if you don't serve me with joy, the enemy will come and sub- make you forcefully to, su- to serve him with tears. So to me, joy is extremely f- essential, extremely connected with everything, to, with heaven on earth here, as joy got to be there. Otherwise, it, it, we cannot portray truly what heaven is like if we are not rejoicing. So it's way beyond feeling good. It, yes. it's, uh, it's, that's why I say it's a, it's a, it's a weapon because it, 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 it dispels the, the strength of darkness and in the devil and so forth. And it just yeah. releases heaven. Yeah. Um, I, what I heard you say is that, is that hopelessness is, is basically the end. I'm sorry, that joy is the antidote to, to hopelessness. Absolutely. And, and and as we know, the world is world is filled with that right now, you know. Just so much of that. Absolutely. Oh no, you know, so much hopelessness. What are we going to do? And um, like you, I, for me, just just sitting with Jesus, with my Father, and knowing, <laughs> knowing I'm loved. Oh, there you are. You're one with me because you chose to live in me. Not just not that. Not only that you like me, and that you want to be around me but you chose me as your home. And there's something about being in that moment that suddenly causes the hopelessness, anything like that to be a million miles away. The peace returns, the joy is there. So I, yeah, I like you, I do a lot of laughing. I cry with the Lord, good tears. You know what I mean? Like uh, tears are good. And I laugh a lot when I'm in his presence. Um, so yeah. I, <laughs> and you know, uh, it says that when Jesus... Jesus f- completed his uh, the task of saving us, the cross, uh, for the joy set ahead, he endured. So yes. this is very powerful for enduring, you yes. know, the cross. It wouldn't get worse than that and the shame. And everything. and so yet that joy was so strong ahead. Of course, yeah. the joy is for us 
to be together with the Lord. And then when he accomplished that, then the Lord, the God anointed him with oil, which to me is the, the final, the crowning uh, after he accomplished Jesus sacrifice, you know, the accomplishment. And what would that oil be? It, it didn't even say it's oil of love necessarily, although it's love is there, uh, or oil of peace, but it says oil of joy, gladness. Joy. And, yeah. and that's the gladness of the, you know, the like when the Lord says, oh, here's my beloved son in whom I'm pleased. Yes. So g- joy, gladness, and the pleasure of God is together. Yes. You know, it's part of knowing uh, that you're like like a child is pleasing to the mom and dad and, and it makes them happy, you know. And when kids are miserable, they're not happy. The parents are concerned. Hey, yeah. what, what's happening? Because the natural state of healthy family is joyful children, yeah. you know, j- because when it's, they're not, the parents going, what is wrong? Right. But yet spiritual don't think that way for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I make that point to, to, to put that into the book that, no, it is so essential for a happy dad to have a happy child, you know, mom and dad, of course. Yeah, yeah. And our well, God is so happy. I mean, God, our, our father is the best. And <laughs> in Christ, we find the pleasure of mm-hmm. God. In Christ, we find the joy, the gladness that God has children, you and me, you know, and yeah. Jesus Christ too. And, and, and then, from that oil that was pleasing, <laughs> it, it comes down to us because we are the body of, he was anointed and we, we're part of that anointing of gladness. Yes. Huge. Uh, so Georgian, you, you got, you have some people uh, watching or listening who um, they want that joy, uh, but they're still kind of right now stuck in hopelessness, discouragement. What would you want to say to them? What would you want to release over them? Yeah, well, I'm very compassionate to people who are um, at the moment of joylessness, and and the, because I was there, I've been there my entire childhood, and and uh, all the way through until I, I ran away and met met Jesus here. So I've been very depressed kid, very suicidal. So I'm not a stranger to that, um, and uh, so I I totally feel compassion and understanding for that the depression of being rejected being you know on and on and and uh and so so i i say that to start with it's like i totally understand and more than me god totally understand where you are at the moment and he's not beating you for like now you need to be joyful what's wrong with you he's not like that he's just wooing wooed me anyways out of this this uh joylessness and depression by saying hey i'm i'm i not only saved you to take you to heaven someday i will but and get get you uh but i want to fill you now with my spirit and my friendship that's why he started with this kind of a uh friendship is a unique thing you don't have to you know do anything for friends you naturally it's a very motivated type spirit so the lord started there and it just is i slipped out of my loneliness and my, you know, even though I was alone physically, but I was not lonely at all. All of a sudden I was filled. Mm-hmm. In fact, I said in the book, uh, I, in my moments with the Lord, sometime late at night, I have to, I get so filled with the presence of God. I want a shout of joy. It, it, and I don't want to scare my neighbors because my neighbors were older people dying, kind of like a retired, very old. And I just would get in my van. I had an old noisy mail truck actually is a note my first van and i would drive around and shout and scream in the middle of the night so that i don't wake anybody or they don't arrest me we think what's wrong with this crazy man i'm just shouting because the joy is so uh you know what i'm saying and, and uh so it's nothing forceful is is absolutely give yourself to to relationship through friendship and the best friend in the world will will permeate you know, before you know it, you feel loved and you feel liked and you feel like there's no judgment because he understand. In my case, I was from the worst situation. A communist cult and rock and roll freak. I mean, everything, every bad thing you can think of, I was involved. Yet the Lord never criticized me for any of these things because he knew the misery. He knew the misery, the lostness, the, 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 the despair. The, and now he says, come on, let's, 
and he connected me to life, to himself. And then I slipped into like a banana slip. I went into his world, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and he, there, there's no virtue other than wanting to be happy. <laughs> like I wanted to be glad. I don't want to. I was sick of depression. And and the Lord, I didn't even ask Him to take it. He took it by. I was just I was just hang, say, hanging out with Him. I don't know if it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But, I just say, give give yourself because the spirit of the Lord is longing for you. I discovered that He's like, "Hey, I'm here now. Let's spend time. I love you. I like you, and you've never known about that." But so, if somebody's right now struggling, it's most likely because of religious experiences. And to you, God is some religious, but that's but God is not like that at all. And and communism is religion. Maybe you have a Christian religion, but so still religion is still stinking, controlling, whatever stuffy. But God is not like that at all. So I just I just release that experiences from uh, whatever you pass. Even maybe even a stuffy church. You, you know, some churches are stuff. Not all. Some are great, but there's some stuffy church. I'm not sure your situation, uh, but uh, or condemning relationship or critic- criticizing relationship. They're, they're just really very hurtful you know so i'm just saying uh, go into the lord go you never you're never gonna be condemned or criticized but the lord never he's <laughs> not like that he's so <laughs> big and strong he knows what how weak and crazy you are uh, in a situation so he's pulling you out his whole thing is to pull you into himself to pull you into his joy to pull you into his love to pull you into his strength Joy is a strength too. It's a lot of it's energy. It's exciting. So if you feel weak and unmotivated, joy very, very motivating. But but what's motivating about joy is God thinking great of you. He's thinking, I like you. I like to make you with me and lift you up with me. That that's what causes me joyful because God. It has future for me. He God has plans for me. God mainly, mainly his own relationship with him. I mean, he's like longing for fellowship with me mm-hmm. and with you. He's longing for fellowship with you, yeah. and that will make you happy. But just give yourself into that fellowship. I think long term, that's the, the the best way to get out of depression and and get solid in the joy. That's good. So I just want to. Um finish that by by just saying to any of you who are feeling this i just say um you you are the one that the father loves he adores you there there is nothing you could do think even the even the discouraging depressing thoughts none of that repels him he is so drawn by you as as his child there's nothing he holds you just like i held my little ones he holds you he wants you he is the one drawing you. He's already has a place for you in his heart. And so um, just let yourself be loved, loved into joy. So, um, George, yeah, thank you, Georgian, for this time. I, I so love and appreciate you as a friend and can't believe it's been, what, you know, 20 plus years. And I look yeah. forward to Man, more times when we're together. Uh, and I just want to encourage you. I, I love, I know we know we don't have any more time, but I, I love that um, you and Winnie, uh, it's not just about the love you feel in your own heart, but that you go out to the nations and you all over the place to garbage dumps where people are located to, you know, not only Bulgaria, but many other places around the world. And that's one of the things that has always, always drawn me to you too. And I've so admired is that your love keeps expressing itself to those who are so hungry for love. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. You mentioned Apostle of Joy. There's a, a Charisma magazine. Uh, it, it, I think it's a digital issue. You can see it on charisma.com. But there's a great, uh, uh, they did a lot of good articles explaining what we do, details for garbage dump and uh, affectionately call it the, the Joy Apostle. Yeah. Yeah. So, Basically uh, what you're doing is you're, you're going out to places that need the love the most, the people who just are forgotten, not by God, but but by society. And you're just going and showing them the love of Jesus. I, I can't even imagine, Georgian, for you and Winnie, uh, when you are in heaven one day, when the Lord shows you the number of hearts you have touched, you, you're going to be wow. astounded. Your jaw is going to drop. <laughs> like, I wow. have no idea. <laughs> 
totally. I'm, I'm not quite aware of all that, but I, I appreciate you saying that, and I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Thank right, you. you you're friend. amazing. A friend of God as well. You always inspire me, both you and your wife, a very good family, and your children. I'm, I've, I've known them since they were little kids, you know, and now they're grown, man. Yeah. And uh, thank you for being a great family spiritually for me in the Bay Area. We, we just, uh, you've changed our lives because the way hospi you're hospitable and the way you uh, connect with us and with a wild drunkenness in the spirit, of course. And we're talking about these uh, great 90s right. and parties right. of Jesus and the holy joy and everything that we went through. Yeah. Uh, and we're connecting that way very, very strongly. So I appreciate that. Thank you so Good much. Good times, huh? Good times. And they yeah. will continue. <laughs> yes, amen. More, Lord. 